Hello, good morning. Good morning, wherever you are. Good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. I really want to thank you all who tuned in from Egypt, from Trinidad and Tobago, from the United States, from the UK, from Canada, from Ghana, and from Kenya. Kenya, my in-laws, my eldest son wants to get married to a Ghanaian lady, a Kikuyu lady. So Kenyans, my in-laws, thank you for coming on to this morning broadcast. Thank you so much. Invite others to join. Let your friends know that we are on because we're going to be handling another interesting aspect of the philosophy of the ant. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do at Dr. Charles Apoki. Also follow us on Facebook. I will also suggest you go to our online bookstore, petrapublications.com. For those of you who want Echo Income, the link to getting Echo Income will soon appear on the screen. You can click on it and make your orders. And then for those of you who want this book, the philosophy of the ant. Oops, all right. Philosophy of the ant. You can get it from our online bookshop. The link will also appear very soon. Please like our videos. Click on the subscribe button and click on the bell. Anytime we share a video, a notification will come up. So that's the link to getting um, Petra Publications materials. I want to thank you so much. My in-law, thank you so much. So I'm about to start the lecture and uh, I will be going at a very fast pace and uh, I want you to I want to pay attention. So we are in chapter two, chapter two of the book, The Philosophy of the Ant. And the topic there is personal overseer. Personal overseer. The link is there on how to get the materials. Please start placing your orders. So, uh, thank you so much, Tam Ariaye. Thank you so much. Personal overseer. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 7. It has no commander, no overseer, or ruler. That's the... That's in Proverbs chapter 6, from verse 6. It says, go to the ant and be wise. It has no personal overseer. It has no commander. An ant takes initiative, initiative. Some people are like wheelbarrows, wheelbarrows. A wheelbarrow will carry a load until you push it, it will not move. So some people are like wheelbarrows. They have dreams, they have responsibilities, they have burdens, they have visions, they have ideas until you push them. They cannot move. 
I will go back to Hilda Bassi. Hilda Bassi, um, before she went for the cooking competition, I didn't know about cooking competition. I didn't know any Indian that won any competition. And somebody will say Dr. Apoki is a very current person. But she took initiative. She took initiative to advertise herself. People will first buy you before they buy your product. Learn that. People will first buy you before they buy your product. So she took initiative to advertise her beauty. She went to channels television and advertised her eloquence and the competition she wants to go into. And then she took initiative to go and meet sponsors. So the Bible says no man lights a lamp and hides it under a bushel. So he said, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and that they may glorify the Lord. So you, it is your duty. There are initiatives. There are things. The Bible says, fear not. It is your responsibility not to be afraid. God will not prevent you from being afraid. He was with them in the wilderness. They decided to be afraid and they died. So you must take initiative for your life. Take initiative. Don't wait for church declaration. This is the year of this. No. You, de you decide. In 2020, I decided that it was my year of globalization. You take a decision. My year of globalization. Your life is a personal asset, a personal responsibility we will be evaluated and judged by God individually, not denominationally, not tribally, not as husband and wife. When Moses' mother decided to build an ark for Moses, it was her initiative. The husband did not join in building. Bini people have a saying, I hope there are Bini people listening to me, who may hear Gumek Bera, if you know one waka, come out, make I pass. If there is nothing that, if you don't want to move, please give me space, let me move. Ume here, Gumek Bera, don't let any person hinder you from taking the responsibility that will take you to greater heights. When Abraham wanted to sacrifice Isaac, if he had gone to discuss with Sarah in contemporary times, he would have ended up in a psychiatric hospital. They would have said he is mad. It might seem as if I'm going to contradict myself later when I talk about the ant, but the truth of the matter is be very careful those you relate with. Some people are fire extinguishers. Some people are speed breakers. The truth of the matter, I found out that it's very difficult for a rich man to be a friend to a poor man because their attitudes are different. Their appetites are different. Their approach to life is different. If you stay in a hotel, you will discover that those who will wake you up with noise and the junior workers, you will hardly hear the voice of the owner of the hotel or the manager or the rich men, legitimately rich people who are camped, who are resident in that hotel. So you must be very careful who you listen to. Take initiative. Take initiative. You don't, you don't need people to prompt you. You wake up. One of the things that helped me Growing up in school was the way we were taught. You woke up, you dressed your bed. After dressing your bed, you had a duty to do. You went there. So initiative. And if you meet any person from government college, you really, who has done well in life, those key principles are visible in him. You wake up to read. No person told me to start doing this broadcast every morning. 
I just told myself if I don't run a church and these things are buried in me, um, I don't want to enrich the cemetery with what I know. Life is like a perfume. If it remains in the bottle, the fragrance is useless. And so I need to spray it out. I need to break the alabaster jar and spray it to as many people as possible in my lifetime. So I woke up, took my bath, dressed, and I'm doing this. So poor people don't take initiative. Failures don't take initiative. You always remind them. You always tell them what to do. Bad governments don't take initiative. You will see a portion of a road getting bad. They will leave it, leave it, leave it. It will grow bigger until a commissioner dies or one big man dies in an accident. Then they will set up an investigative panel to know why he died there. Lack of initiative. So if you are like the aunt, have initiative. I was in the hospital with my daughter to see an ophthalmologist and we were, I don't know who was eating and a portion of bean cake fell down near my feet. Before I could say Jack Robin, Robinson, ants were there. Who called them? Initiative. There are so many things in your life that are waiting to be acted upon and you are sluggish. There are people I don't make friends with, people who always say, I am waiting upon the Lord. God gave you brain so that you don't disturb him. But there are times you need to hear from him. But it's, he doesn't tell you when to impregnate your wife. He doesn't tell you when you are hungry. If an ant can have a divinely coded instinct in him to take the right, or in it, to take the right decisions, you too. In, in um, social sciences, there's something called intuition. And there are three types of intuition. There is a eidetic intuition. Something just comes into your mind that you were not thinking about. And then the revelation just comes and then you act on it and you get a result. So you didn't premeditate. You were not trained in that direction. And then there is emergent intuition. You were thinking about a problem and then suddenly in the course of meditation, a solution comes. Archimedes was living in Syracuse. He entered his bathtub and water was displaced by his weight. It was from there he shouted Eureka and the principle of flotation was discovered. It is from there that the Eureka can to determine mass and volume in uh, physics was discovered. It is from there that ships were built and the principle was applied to submarines. So I am um, emergent intuition. One of the things that you must do as a successful person is to meditate. I don't pray, no, no, no. I think, it's a meditate upon it day and night and you shall have good success. It didn't say pray day and night and you shall have good success. Meditate. Your meditation is prayer. Bill Gates wrote a book, pray, um, um, doing business at the speed of thought. Mine is praying at the speed of thought. So I condition my mind to have dialogue with the Holy Spirit. So there is then the ideal intuition. Ideal intuition is when you are taking an action and you have a confirmatory sweetness in your spirit, you will know that you are doing the right thing. But when there is hesitancy, conflict, fear, and contradiction that is intense enough, sometimes you need to rethink. So your major problem today is initiative. There are some things you are supposed to have done that you have failed to do. 
Decisions you are supposed to take that you have failed to do. Calls you are supposed to make that you have failed to make. Emails you are supposed to send that you have failed to send. People you are supposed to consult that you have failed to consult. Places you are supposed to go that you have failed to go. The most painful aspect is that there are some of you, people are owing you, you are so scared and so ashamed to even call them. Many of you praying, God is waiting for you to act. Until you put your leg in the river Jordan, it will not divide. So initiative. Ants are the first to reach any crumb of food that falls from a kitchen or a dining table. The ant is sensitive enough to know when an opportunity is nearby. I think we are the only religion, Christians are the only people that pray with their eyes closed. Other religions pray with their eyes open. So, do you know when there is an opportunity? Do you know when there is an opportunity? I was able to buy these lands that I have built on because somebody gave me an information. I saw an opportunity. I acted on it. At that time, the owner of the land needed money desperately. So I had to buy at a lower cost opportunities. I easily identify opportunities. So you must make sure you have a nose for opportunities. You can smell opportunities. If you are too talkative, too cynical, too critical, too condemnative, you will not, and a complainant, you will not see opportunities. And if you are surrounded by too many companions, you will not see opportunities. All of you will be talking at the same level of complaints. So, white ants can consider somebody's furniture or a house and decide to use the wood for food. Somebody's house. <laughs> somebody's furniture. I was listening to a woman recently and she is the one that supplies these security doors in banks. And they were buying those doors from Italy. And at a point, the doors, the companies in Italy went bankrupt. And so they wanted to buy the company. But they found out that the assets and liabilities that they had, the liabilities were far more than the assets. So they decided to buy their equipment, let them go bankrupt, buy the equipment, buy the manufacturing process, buy the franchise, and they bought that. So this lady, a Nigerian, now owns a company in Italy that supplies those doors to the former customers of that company. If it is a typical Nigerian, you will go to church and start praying. Let that company not fold up. Let that company not fold up. What if it is the will of God for that company to fold up so that you can buy it? And you will miss that opportunity. So a Nigerian woman has a company overseas in Italy that produces goods and ends foreign exchange. Ancestral causes do not affect that. Yeah, I have been hearing one word online, Idan. Idan. <laughs> when you take initiative, Idan does not affect you. In fact, the why, why Nigerians like this song, prayer is the key, prayer is the key, prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. It's mental laziness. It's stupidity. You don't want to take initiative. You don't want to take responsibility. Jesus said, don't you know I should be about my father's business? That was when he grew in stature and wisdom and obtained favor from God and man. You will limit the power of God in you if you don't take initiative. Not the devil. The devil is not as powerful as that. White ants can eat somebody's furniture. 
White ants can consider somebody's building that is unoccupied. One of the things that happens when you live in a building because of the cooking, the heat, the, the noise and the activity, white ants don't come into that place. So, because they eat cellulose. So, your initiative, you are getting to 50. What plans do you have for retirement? What plans do you have for your children? I shared a message 10 years from now. Your daughter that is 10, in another 10 years, he or she should be graduating from university. Have you taken initiative to be putting money aside? You have been working in a company. I gave, went to give a lecture to a cooperative, Nigerian Post Authority Cooperative. And somebody said, why didn't they tell us this lecture, give us this lecture, when we just joined this company? Is it now that I'm retiring in September? Who cares? Initiative. No person prompted me to leave Aba. Initiative. No person told me to stop practicing medicine at 40. Initiative. No person started, prompted me to start this Facebook page and broadcast initiative and it's like a full-time job for me now initiative so initiative we are raising children that do not have initiative we are training house helps house girls drivers junior workers and we are not training our children Somebody said that we are training our husbands and loving our children. Why it should be the reverse? We should love our husbands and train our children. If we don't take time, all these labors and all these buildings, our children will sell them and throw away. This page is being managed by my son. He is here. Yesterday, Ministry of Education people came to my school at Okokoko, and the, one of them was asking questions and that. And my daughter that studied education started speaking to her and teaching her about schooling, about education. At the end of the day, she embraced my daughter and said, I need some of this anointing. So listen to me now. As I am, all the schools I am running I have a capable daughter that will manage all the schools. The polytechnic we are building, I have an engineer with PhD who will manage the polytechnic director. I want to build a specialist hospital. I have a son who is a specialist. I have a daughter-in-law who is a specialist. I'm a doctor. My wife is a nurse who might marry another medical doctor to join. So this uh, your life is planned. When you plan and you take initiative, you pray less. When you see a professor shaking his head like a concrete mixer, he doesn't he has not taken initiative to manage his life well. At 64, I am maintaining this weight and this stature. It's initiative. If you look at my cheekbones, they are high. Fat is supposed to cover them. But I've taken initiative to maintain a good figure. I don't eat anyhow. So initiative. Now, I said initially that the, the ants plant fungal gardens for retirement. Fungal gardens for winter. Please, it is good to get old. But it is not good to get old and be broke. Good to get old. It is not good to get old and be broke. Take initiative. Plan. So, who prompts the ant? Inside the ant is an instinct coded by God for survival. Inside each man is a divine program coded for productivity. Inside you, each, inside each seed, there was a desert in uh, is this South America or North America now, Atacama Desert. 
one of the driest places in the world. It did not rain for many years there. And then El Nino came, a climatic a condition, and rain fell. Then flowers blossomed. Who told the flowers to blossom? Inside them, in that quiescent stage, there was initiative, initiative. There was initiative inside them. Who teaches a weaver bed to build a house, a nest? Initiative. When a lizard wants to lay eggs, it starts to dig a hole. You are getting pregnant, you are having sex, then you get pregnant. At the end of nine months, you now call Dr. Apoki that your wife delivered and you didn't have money to pay hospital bills. Mumu, 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 mumu. Pregnancy is not an emergency. It gave you nine months notice. Don't use your irresponsibility to create an emergency for me. Take initiative. I married at 26. I started buying things down for my baby at the end during youth service. I was working for a man. I was looking at the direction at, that he was going as during my NY, as I was working for him, two years contract, and I was buying archery for sale, galley pods, petri dishes. I was buying things down. At the end of two years, when I retired, when I resigned at 20, 29, I opened my own practice. I bought a car during National Youth Service because I needed to carry my wife and my child, and I needed to be coming to worry to see my parents. So, initiative. There is a program, a code in you that you have always been fighting against. Move, you will not move. It is inertia. Inertia is the reluctance to move when you are supposed to move and the reluctance to stop when you are supposed to talk, stop. So, you have this, this code in you that you have been fighting how many of you, if you are sincere with me now, that there are so many ideas God has been placing in your mind that you did not act upon and you have seen other people doing the same thing that you wanted to do and they are doing it well? Initiative. The code in man right from birth teaches a child to cry, prompts a child to cry, without you teaching the child to cry. Once the child cries, there's an expansion of the lungs, and it sucks in oxygen. That's why when you deliver them, you turn them upside down, so that if there is any amniotic fluid or anything, it will drain out, you suck that out. As the child cries, that instinct sucks in oxygen, that inspiration sucks in oxygen, and not reaches the brain and the hearts and everything starts to get oxygen. There is initiative, initiative. To assess the maturity of a child, developmental milestones of a child, there, there's something called sucking reflex. Who teaches a child how to suck breast milk? Who teaches a child how to suck breast milk? It is the code. It is the initiative. There is an initiative in the child to suck breast milk for survival. There is another initiative in the child. The, the another instinctive initiative is the grasping reflex. The thumb and the index finger, if you put your index finger in between the thumb and the index finger of a child, the child will hold it. Sometimes the grip is so firm that you can lift the baby. I'm talking about newborn babies with grasping reflex. So, do you know how to grip opportunities? When I see church people very feeble, very lousy, very lazy, you don't know how to grab opportunities. Wheelbarrow, they keep pushing you. Ah! So, when a child reaches a certain stage, starts to sit. And then when, she, when he or she is sitting, 
throws the hands forward. He wants to crawl. I have a grandson and I've been monitoring his developmental milestones. We have video recording them. And then a the time comes, he wants to hold things to stand. And then he wants to walk. He wants to struggle food from your mouth. Now, all these statements by the child are saying, I have come to this world to make a mark. I think somebody asked me yesterday, a medical doctor, I said, what is it that you enjoy? You don't womanize, you don't smoke, you don't go to club. I told him, it is my responsibilities that I enjoy. As I'm speaking to you now, I'm enjoying myself. I'm seeing people from different places, different nationalities, different social strata, listening to me. I'm deriving pleasure from what I am doing. The initiative to be a blessing to humanity gives me joy. That's the joy somebody gets from serving meals, cooking. I was in, um, I was in Utineg. Utineg is close to Port Elizabeth in South Africa. And we went for lunch. I saw this white guy serving with so much joy, so much joy. I didn't, I didn't know when I started weeping. I went with Emmanuel Adimora. I was just weeping. Then I called him. Why are you so happy doing what you are doing? Oh, he said, we went, I went on a missionary journey to um, Malawi and I saw people um, living lives of hardship and difficulties, but they had joy. They respected their parents while I was complaining against my parents. And I made up my mind that when I come back to South Africa, I will do whatever I'm doing with joy. I cried throughout that day, and Ima Adimora could not understand. He was asking me, why is it that I'm weeping? So I derive responsibility, I derive joy from responsibility. Uh, we are adults listening to me here. I derive intellectual orgasm from responsibility. That's why I don't do adultery. The joy I get from doing something right, meeting people's intellectual needs, spiritual needs, will outlast my going to have sex with a woman. Will outlast it. So I derive intellectual orgasm. When I print a book and I bring it out, the joy I get. When I wrote Echo Income and people read it, they, joy. Somebody saw my books. I had about 40 books displayed on tables at um, Alva Nikoku University, now then it was College of Education. And he said, Obofuma do Diraku Konka Nile, on a Nabali. Is it only one man that wrote all these books? That statement, does he sleep at night? That statement is more than sexual relationship. When I see my workers close and they are going back home, and I know that each of them has about two children, three children, four dependents, and I have never owed them salary for the past 23 years. It gives me joy. When I see them going home with rice or whatever we give to them for Christmas, it gives me joy. When my friend sends uh, money down, we bought rice, beans, gari, one million, sent, gave to old people in my community. It gives me joy. gives me orgasm. So, my enjoyment is in my responsibility, is in the initiatives I take. Now, listen and listen well. Many, many Christians have lost the instinct to survive. Just to survive, they've lost it. You will see a madman he reflexly looks for food, reflexly protects his children, reflexly approaches, I mean, avoids oncoming vehicles. That's the reflex to survive. I've done exercise on the floor here. I did 10 squatting exercises for elderly people in my bathroom before I took my bath. It is the reflex to survive. The reflex to survive. So, you can't be a parasite on people. 
So, many Christians need to sharpen the need to catch opportunities because opportunities pass every day. I wrote here that opportunities do not wait for people. People should learn to wait for and expect opportunities. Opportunities don't wait for people. People should learn to wait for and expect opportunities. Have you seen the crocodile? There is this migration in Kenya and this um, something um, uh, wilderness in Kenya. The animals will migrate. I've forgotten the name, but I can I have it in my, my head. You will see crocodiles will stay in that water. Only their nostrils are out. Quiet. They are waiting for the migration of animals to take place. And then they will just catch one and make sure they drag that one home. When an ant catches opportunity, it takes it home. How much of your salary gets home? How much of your salary gets home? How much of what you have earned in life can you point to that I took home? Every income I made from speaking in churches, my wife said, let us build structures here. I talked about grasshopper and addresses. So that even if they don't invite us, we will have something to be doing. Even if you don't invite me to preach, I have something to do. I have the school to go to schools to go to, I have tenants to pay me rent, I have farm to go to, I have real estate. In fact, I start making money from my bed. I start making money from my bed. People wake me up with alerts and I earn in advance. When I was buying books to read, when I was developing the mind, my wife would tell me these books that you are buying. Have you finished reading them? I was preparing for today. They pay me in advance for lectures I have not given. So, learn to wait for and expect opportunities. There is no economic meltdown that will affect you. If the economy melts, put traps of buckets down to collect the melted economy. <laughs> Dr. Poki Ibiakwalozo. For three years, I was telling people that the economy was going to go down during Udwagan's time because of fracking, that the price of oil was going to fall because of shale gas and because the cost of production of oil in Nigeria is too high compared to countries like Saudi Arabia that produce a barrel of oil for $8, that the economy will fall and that I will not increase my school fees, but that people's, people in expensive schools will migrate to my school. So I did not increase school fees for three years. Meanwhile, I was developing the schools renovating the toilets, changing the doors. One day I personally went there to clean the toilets. Lo and behold, the economy collapsed. And people couldn't pay expensive school fees. I had set up a good school, good standard, good discipline, good environment. And people started drifting to my school. And my population increased. Nami Kosam, no, it is sense money. Recently, I went to the cassava mill. It was only me that brought cassava that day to the mill. That was on um, Saturday, yes, Saturday last week. It was only me that brought cassava. There were no cassava stems to uproot. When the flood took place, I rose up to the opportunity. I started... Um, asking for financial assistance, donations of materials from all over the world, and people sent me lots of money and materials. 
and I distributed materials around Isoko, Avery, Ni, some Ijo areas, and gave them materials, clothing. But there was a problem that was going to wait, was going to come up. There were no cassava stems. The cassava stems were destroyed. I had cassava, I had acres of cassava. And then the prices of, of gari started going up. And I decided to produce special gari. Somebody is coming to buy gari this morning. He said that his family cannot eat any other gari apart from Dr. Apoki's gari, executive gari. So gari price went up. I sold gari, made profit from gari. As I was selling and our protein, I was replanting so that I can reharvest. And now I'm hearing that there's going to be food shortages in Nigeria in the future. I am already prepared. I don't set trap, wait for them. Now so, the problem with life, according to Governor Cuomo of New York, is that when things go wrong, it is the poor that pay the highest price. The truth of the matter, when things go wrong, it is the unprepared that pay the highest price. Hear this and hear this, and somebody should write it, maybe Rita or Modua should write it. When you plan and prepare well in your country, the government in power is not important. Your economy can be different from the economy of your nation. I got richer under Buhari. I might get richer even if a goat becomes the president. Whoever becomes president does not affect my economy. Because I try to be a step ahead of the challenges. When there was crisis... In a, in a worry, I shifted to Ugili. And I heard clearly from God that land was going to become expensive. So my mates were buying cars, dressing excessively, everything and wearing as a gift. When you succeed, what people struggle for, people give them to you as gifts. Do you know that I started buying land, buying land, and then suddenly, because of the crisis at Wari, people started shifting to Ugeli, and the prices of land went up. I had planned ahead. I had put my bucket in the rain. When the rain falls, it won't fall on one man's house. Remember that. It can fall on the houses of the whole village. Now only the person will put bucket for rain, now they collect water. It is only the man that puts a container to collect water that collects water from the rain. It's only the man that creates drainage that prevents flood. When the rain falls, it won't fall on one man's house. Remember that, true but put containers outside to collect the water. Put drainages around your facilities so that you won't get flooded. Dr. Poki, Ibiakwalozo. Opportunities don't wait for people. People should learn to wait for them and expect them. The ant is very punctual. Punctual. I said somewhere that it's only in poor countries that they pay people per month because they know they are stupid. Very stupid people. I'm using the word stupid. In those days, I grew up meeting my father, receiving salary every two weeks. But it got to a point when they paid salary two weeks, the remaining people will not come to work. They will go and drink. They won't come to work. So, they said, okay, let us be keeping the money till the end of the month so that they will keep coming and then we will pay them. That's slave mentality. That's slave. 
In developed societies, they pay per hour. In Nigeria, they pay me per hour for speaking. So, if you can't be punctual, you will cut short your life. You will cut short your life. You will underutilize your life. Punctuality. Oh boy, that was one of the first trainings I gave to myself at the age of 40 when I came here. Though I had been practicing it right from government college, Ugeli, where if you go late, water will be poured on your food. Practiced it with Bishop Edo Hassim, who does not go late. When I came to Abba, I made it, I came to Ugeli, I made it a point of duty to make sure I am punctual. When you are punctual and you reach there before the people, you want to give a lecture, your mind is more organized. You will get more revelations. You get acclimatized to the environment. When you are punctual in opening your shop, you get the early customers. When you are punctual, the traffic is less when you are going. That's why in Lagos, hey, I want to leave um, Lekki to the airport for the flight at uh, Z6. We left by 4 a.m. And there were already people in the, ro in the road. Then I believed Apoki's theory of motivation. Apoki's theory of motivation states that motivation is inversely proportional to the distance from the center of activity. Motivation is inversely proportional to the distance from the center of activity. The boy in Lagos is motivated, wakes up early in Okokomaiko if you want to go to CMS, to school. So he wakes up early. The boy that is in the village in Kokori or Otokutu, the school is nearby. People who live close to church go late. I will soon be there now. I will soon be there. So, when somebody is not ready to manage his time well and be punctual in preparing for whatever he wants to do or arriving wherever he's supposed to arrive, you will remain poor and backward. I do a really can testify. Our conference is by 10 o'clock. We we'll do our conferences 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock we will start. Even if it's only two people, I won't wait for you. You cannot waste my life. And let me just give you a statistics I always give to people. If you are 30 years and you are going to live to 90, you have already spent one third of your life. So you have 60 years left. If you sleep eight hours every day, it's eight over 24 times 60. You will sleep another 20 years away. Remember, a little sleep, a little slumber, and a little folding of the hands to rest. Poverty, your poverty, will come and kidnap you. So, uh, Osai, I don't know if uh, Dr. Ofoma is streaming on YouTube at the same time. So, you will sleep 20 years. So, you are 30 now. Another 20 years has left your life. So you are 20. It's only 40 years that you have to live productively. If you are stupid enough to watch successful people on television, the thing with poor people is that they watch successful people on television. Okay, we are not streaming at this moment. So if you go and watch Z World, you watch um, uh, Big Brother Ninja, you watch Manchester United and Arsenal, don't kill me, for four hours every day, four over 24 is one over six. Use six to divide 60, you will spend another 10 years. So you are 30 years, 60 years will be wasted in frivolities. So only few will be left, 30, um, 30 years left. So. 
Now, in your last 10 years, you might not be very productive. So you are 30 years old now. Only 20 years is available productively to do well. And if you develop stupid habits of playing a pele draft, draft, or playing snooker at a tender age, what will you play in retirement? You will find out that at the end of the day, you have wasted this life and you have not achieved much. So punctuality in paying your workers, punctuality in paying your creditors, punctuality in replying to mails, punctuality in doing nearly everything, harvest, punctuality, punctuality. I, I supply things to a supermarket at Worry called Clarissa. And I was to supply cucumbers to her. By 7.30, I was in front of her supermarket. And she said, doctor, how, how did you, I said, I teach punctuality, so I must leave punctuality. When I was driving the school bus, there was a day I waited in front of the residence of a woman at Yede. When she brought her children out, she saw me, she said, oh God, did you sleep here? It was because I had a very lousy driver who would not come early. So I woke up by four, got dressed, 5.30, I was in the school, carried the bus, I drove to Yede, carried my children, I carried all the children. One man even gave me a gift of a thousand naira for driving school bus and being punctual. So prepare in advance for your opportunities. I had an experience, and that experience was that uh, one of my one of my drivers did not carry my child well, and I had to go there to carry the child myself. And Children came from that place because I went there. Then there was the time I noticed that um, banks were coming to Ugeli. New businesses were coming to Ugeli. So I took a chemical, went to my toilet on a Sunday prior to resumption and cleaned all the tiles myself. Cleaned the floor. Flushed it. Then Surprisingly, a woman came, sophisticated lady. I, we are new in town here, and my husband said that uh, um, I should come and inspect the toilets in the school. Can you imagine? Toilets, not classrooms. And, uh, and uh, uh, one of the parents said, ah, you go fit chop for their toilet too. I had gone ahead of the demand of my customer to clean the toilets. So the ant is punctual. We waste so much time in this country. You will see a Christian go to shop in the morning, particularly in the East. The average Igbo boy is aggressive. I get them, come, come, come. And you can't blame them when they do well. And you can't be jealous of the Igbo man who puts in so much effort into his life and puts in so much effort into his business. I get them, get them. I get them, I get them, I get them. So, they do well. But when I go to my Christian brethren sometimes, you will see them in the shop. They will, people have started hustling for money. You are doing, we have come again, we have come again, in the shop. Then after singing, it will open Bible and start reading. Bring a uh, uh, daily manner, bring one other devotional and be reading. In the shop, my wife did her devotion very early before people woke up. And she's gone to work. In the shop, when you ask her, what are you doing? I'm doing quiet time. <laughs> Let me not use my usual word. Mumu. Market time is noisy time. Market time is business time. Business time is noisy time. Do your quiet time at home and come and hustle, man. Don't use God as talisman or talis God. He will not help you. 
Your customers are coming, you are waving to them that you are reading Bible. Look at you. When you fail, you say it's the devil or ancestral causes. Utilize your time well. The ants does not stroll. <laughs> they do everything they do with seriousness. Ants don't stroll. They're always on the move. Small creatures, always on the move. Ants are always, they don't stroll. I don't know whether they sleep. <laughs> always on the move. Oh, you want to be the richest man in Africa? Dangote sleeps for hours. He drives himself. Always on the move. Very active. Christian brother, be on the move. There's no second chance to make a first impression. No second chance to make a first impression. Every customer has other customers in them. We need to teach people that poverty is not as a result of demons or supernatural influences or causes. It is an attitude. Poverty is attitudinal. You disrespect people. You are cowardly. You are late. You are noisy. You are lousy. Let me just tell you, have you ever attended a church of rich people? Rich people, very rich people. There's one in the marina in Lagos. Very rich people. If you listen very carefully, somebody was screaming just now. It's a poor person. Go to that church in, in Marina where Shoneko and the rest of people attend. You won't hear unnecessary shouting. Somebody scream. Yeah! Somebody shout the loudest amen. You get the biggest miracle. Woo! So how do deaf and dumb people get healed? How do deaf and dumb people get healed if it is by shouting the loudest hallelujah that you get the loudest miracle? Rita Omodua, please write that. How do deaf and dumb people get healed if it is by shouting the loudest amen that you get the biggest miracle or shouting amen like thunder? Go to the elite churches. They are calm. God hears their prayers. Radical for Jesus and your brain is not working. Calm down. Think. Know how to relate with people. Know how to manage your life. The ant is very organized, very calm. Demons are not as omnipotent as we want them to look like. We spend so much time glorifying the works of the devil more than the works of God. Instead of thinking about the ability and the capacity within us and the willingness of God to help us and, and to achieve greatness, we keep concentrating on the works of the devil. Where is Nathan Uzoma? Nathan Uzoma that wrote 777 level 6. He has paled into oblivion. Where is that man that used to come and uh, dress as a uh, Ogboni man? Monkey, thank you so much. That man that used to dress as a Ogboni man, a mock man to come and dance in your churches. Where is he? He has paled into insignificance. Don't concentrate on the devil. Don't concentrate on witches. Concentrate on Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and the finisher of our faith. He has given us all that pertains to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. The knowledge of what he has done. The knowledge of who we are in him. The knowledge of where he has placed us. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. When you fast and pray and you don't seem to be getting the results you anticipate, there is need, the need to stop and take stock of your life. You fast and pray. You fast and pray. But you are not getting results. Sit down. Reevaluate your life. Sometimes you need to meet brash people like me to tell you what is wrong with you. There are times you start, you need to, there are times, <laughs> I hope Rita is there. 
There are times you need to, we need to stop binding the devil and start loosening ourselves from attitudinal bondages. There are times we need to stop binding the devil and start loosening ourselves from attitudinal bondages. Losing yourself from timidity. I'm a shy person. I don't have a good memory. I don't have a good handwriting, so I write with capital letters. I don't have a good memory, so I read. If I want to preach, if you notice very well, as I'm sitting down before they call me up, I will be reading what I want to say. I have read it at night. Wake up, I will read it. I might copy it again. I will read it in the car as I'm coming. As I sit down before you call me up to pray, I will, to preach, I will read it. There was the one I went somewhere. I didn't have the, I didn't know the topic to give to the message. While they were singing and dancing, I remained calm, like Elisha, when the harpist was playing. And it was then the topic came. And the topic was um, the significant Easter, the sociology, the science, the spirituality, and the significance. So you attitude, all these ancestral causes are transgenerational attitudes. Transgenerational attitudes that might be chromosomal, be sociological, be environmental. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. Diligent hands bring wealth. Diligent hands bring wealth. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. Why? Let me ask you a question. Why do you have problems with your workers? Why do you have problem with your workers? Yesterday we were to go to the farm to do gari, to uproot cassava. I got dressed, called them. Oh, they said one of them said that uh, she was not going, that she's still mourning. She's still mourning. I buried my father and went to work the next day. I buried my mother, went to work the next day, three weeks apart. I was... I went and carried my elder brother, buried him, and went to preach the same day. I have, on, I have time only for the living. I have time only for the living. That's why I've told my children, don't waste my money and waste your time doing befitting burial. It is benefiting burial because people will want to eat and drink. Drink when a man is dead. So, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 5. The diligent hands, the plans of the diligent will lead to profit. So, if you are, if you are making losses, it's a sign that you are not diligent. I had somebody selling Gary for me. I never saw anything from the Gary. Until I stopped her, changed the plans. I said, let's see money from my garden. The next thing I need to do is to reduce the cost of production. I have a lot of trees. I need to start getting firewood from my trees. I need to resuscitate my grinding machine and my press so that some of the monies I'm spending, I need to go and buy palm oil in bulk. From somewhere, I can get it in bulk. And then I will reduce my cost of production and my profit margin will go up. To be wealthy, we need the grace of God, which is both divine enablement and a divine favor. The two are predicated on activity, not sleep. Hey! Who my write that one? <laughs> to be wealthy, we need the grace of God, which is both divine enablement and divine favor. These two are predicated, predicated on activity, not sleep. 
that is divine enablement and divine favor are predicated on activity, not sleep. Ado Eriri said that favor is a reaction. That is, if there is no action, there might not be favor. Grace is useless with inactivity. In fact, it with grace, and you don't have activity, it will lead to disgrace. So favor and divine enablement rest on the foundation of activity. To rule over your competitors in any business, you need an extra input, an extra touch, beyond, beyond what your mates call their maximum. To rule over your competitors in any business, you need an extra input, an extra touch, beyond what your mates call their maximum. Somebody will see me speaking like this. I didn't wake up to be like this. I didn't go to Bible school. It was from the Sunday school I was teaching. I will read my Sunday school manual five times. I will, that time we didn't have internet. I will put about eight Bibles down. I will cross check everything from different versions of the Bible. That time we had one shaving powder that smelled terribly. As I put, I will read the, 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 the Sunday school manual. When I put my shaving powder on, before it will take some time before it works, I will go through my Sunday school manual. I will read it five times. And by the time I will be teaching, my class will get filled. And then they will break it up. It will get filled. They will break it up again. It will get filled. And many of those I taught in the Sunday school are now bishops. They are now big preachers. Great preachers. It was from taking what I was doing seriously, putting the extra touch that has made me who I am. If you go to our school in Okwokoko, we put in an extra touch. People were passing, they thought it was a hotel. No, it was a school. My wife says, don't let people meet you where they left you. Don't let them meet you how they left you. If you need to crawl, crawl. You need to walk, walk. You need to run, run. You need to fly, fly. But never ever let them meet you where and how they left you. And I will add, if you cannot walk and you are crippled, tell somebody to carry you and carry your load. There is this story of a young girl who was paralyzed. And uh, one day the father came from work. He said, Daddy, I will carry your box upstairs, your, your briefcase upstairs today. Oh, the father was so excited but also troubled. He said, how will you carry this briefcase? The girl said, Daddy, I will carry the briefcase and you will carry me. And so the girl carried the briefcase and the father carried her upstairs. You are like that girl. You might have disadvantages. You might have limitations. You might have challenges. You might come from my kind of background, have my challenges in speaking English well, have bad handwriting, have timidity, come from a remote place like as I'm, uh, I, I, I come from. But by all means, tell God to carry you and carry your load. Carry you and carry your load. So, Obo wemujo wemo amaraya. Obo wemujo wemo amaraya. He said, I'm not the one that is holding myself with his mercy, it's his grace. Okay. Today, playing professional football is very enticing in Europe. But if you know what it takes to stay in Europe, to walk in Europe, 
you will, you won't go to Europe. If you any person that sends you money from overseas, treasure it. Any person, any person that for a Nigerian to make a mark, for an African to make a mark in a European nation, he or she puts in extra effort because your skin naturally is seen as a disadvantage. You must, for you as a black man, you must do 10 times more than what the white man would do. So for you to score goals in life, you must have the right mental attitude, dare to face the defenders and dribble them, have stay in the right position where God can pass the ball to you, and have the Osimen, Victor Simen mentality of scoring goals from different and difficult attitudes. Okay. I want to quickly run. The ant consults. When you see ants, you will go to the, you'll read the other ones in the book. When you see ants going, they walk in pairs. One is coming in the opposite direction and one is going in the other direction. In life, there is traffic. There is one traffic coming in one direction. Either those who have succeeded and are going for more success, or those who want to succeed and going in another direction, or those who have failed and are going to consult. You will see ants. One ant carrying something on the head and the other one not carrying. We we'll meet the, the one with carrying something on the head. We we'll talk to the one carrying something uh, without. Do you still have something where you carried from? We we'll say yes, and then it will go. It's a good day is there. When we learn to consult people who have succeeded, succeeded, the success is contaminating. It will be. It's related to a culture. Mbappe met uh, Ronaldo, had his posters all over his, his room. Um, Chad the Claus of Cape Town saw Michael Phelps swimming at the age of eight. And he saw that Michael Phelps swims eight hours every day. Then a dose theory of repetition comes in. He started swimming eight hours every day in Cape Town for 12 years. That is, he swam cumulatively for four years. He saw himself on the same platform with Michael Phelps in the 2020 Olympics. And he beat him. He beat him in the Olympics. So you must learn, you must learn to associate with people who have succeeded, learn their formula, repeat it, and you will get success. So one of the things you must get from this broadcast is that success is contaminative. And then there's Charles Schooling in Singapore who saw Michael Phelps going somewhere for a competition and took pictures with him, he interviewed him, and the same Charles Schooling won a gold medal in Olympics. So, when you see people succeed, don't criticize them. Go near them, copy their formula, and apply it. So the ants, they consult. But don't consult idiots. Idiocy is equally infective. More infective than mumps. More infective than, than COVID. So consult. So, associate with success. Consult success. Admire success. And the ants, they don't give up. What I do is that when, I go to, when I'm going to the hospital from my, my house, number one, the ants are bold. You will see ants carry cockroach. The cockroach is not fully dead. It's struggling. For ants to approach a cockroach requires boldness. For 10 minutes to eat your furniture in your house, it requires boldness. So the people that broke the roof of uh, somebody's house and lowered their friend. And uh, they, they said that it was, uh, Jesus said it was an act of faith. 
If you are not bold, you can't succeed in life. So, the, the ants will carry a cockroach. You will see them. By mathematical extrapolation, cockroaches are like trailers compared to nursery school children. But they, they, they will carry the, co the, the cockroach. As they are climbing up, I will mark where they stopped and I will mark it. Then I will push, push the cockroach down. Before you know it, I will go to the hospital. As I'm coming back, they've crossed the former mark. I don't know where you fell. I don't know the mistake you make, you made. Push on like the ant. You will cross over. The Bible says, even though a righteous man falls seven times, he rises again. So the ants have that mentality. Don't throw in the towel just yet. The referee is your brother. His name is Jesus Christ. And the crowd are your brethren. Say so we are surrounded by a crowd of witnesses. And there was this story that Bishop Ferbi has said when Buster Douglas was knocked down. I don't know whether it was Mike Tyson or whoever. They counted, counted nearly to 10 and Buster Douglas came up. And Buster Douglas eventually beat Mike Tyson. And they asked him, what happened? He said, I told, my mother told me, win this fight for me. I think the mother had cancer then. He said, win this fight for me. And the mother died a few days before the fight. When he was down, he remembered his mother. And he said, I will get up and win this fight. And he got up and win, won the fight. Who do you need to win for? Your children? Your wife? It has been found out that men who are in love with a woman do very well because they want to succeed for their wives. Me, I want to succeed for the black man. I want to succeed for the black man so that when somebody sees a black man, he respects him. I want to succeed for the Nigerian so that I can bring a new narrative to the global arena. The time you feel like giving up is when your problem has reached its elastic limit. Perseverance is the key word to success in life. Don't give up. Today's Christianity of quick fix Christianity will not take us far. Take it now. If I be a man of God, it doesn't work like that. Things take time sometimes. And you need to persevere to be able to get the results. I'm your friend, Dr. Charles Apoki. There are several pages I've jumped in the philosophy of the ant, and I ended in page 16. The next, tomorrow at the same time, I will be on, we'll start at chapter 3, the ant and the sluggard. I will encourage you to get the material, philosophy of the ant, Ufuma will put the link up, get echo income there are other videos that are on queue the oil of marriage will be releasing them gradually please subscribe to my youtube channel um follow me on facebook and share with others please share with others share with others so that youtube can be recommending it for people to listen to God bless you, all my friends from all over the world. I remain your friend, Dr. Charles Pocky.